Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm going to be working on the Matchbox number no. 5 London Bus, also called the Route Master, and this particular one came out in 1965. After giving my hands a quick wash, it's time to start working on the model. So what we're looking at here is a red bus. Unfortunately somebody has painted it green. These bus models actually did come out in green, so maybe some child had two red ones and actually wanted one of each. Whoever it was, they certainly didn't hold back on using plenty of paint. So I'm going to take this out to my shed, put it in the vise and take the base off this model. When working with tools, always be alert to any potential hazard that may be present for your safety and the safety of others. Unfortunately I missed out on recording the removal of the base, I was uh, called away. Um, so here's a shot of how I took it off using a flat bladed screwdriver. The model separated into basically two parts, the upper deck and the lower deck. Here I am removing the seating from the upper deck. As you can see the lower deck seating was glued into place with the uh, green paint. It made it quite awkward to remove. Now for a quick look at uh, what I've got to contend with here. I think the plastic is going to be quite difficult to clean as it has a lot of green paint on it, especially on the lower deck stairwell section. I'm going to be paint stripping this and uh, I'll probably have to do it twice because basically I'm going to be removing two coats of paint, one green and one red. After disassembly I remove the wheels and that way when I repaint it the wheels don't get painted. I will show you how to refit them later in the video. To remove them I use a grinding tool on my Dremel like this. I'm being very careful not to damage the model or score the wheels whilst doing this process. When the end of the axle has been ground down I can now remove the wheels. I now repeat the process for the other axle. Okay, now it's time to paint strip the model. I use my tried and tested poly stripper paint stripper. I must stress it's very important to wear rubber gloves whilst handling this chemical. It's very caustic and if you get it on your skin you soon know about it because it hurts like hell. You may have noticed that this bus has BP viscostatic advertisements on the side. I did another one of these models about six months ago and that one was branded BP Long Life. I'll be showing you both models at the end of this video. Other than the BP branded buses, there was two other types available at the time. One had an advertisement for Baron of Beef on it, and the other one had an advertisement for Pegram Shop Fitters. Both of these, if you find them, are extremely rare and are highly collectible. Now I'm removing the loosened paint using a toothbrush and water. The water helps to neutralise the paint stripper. As you can see, I was right, I will have to give these a second coat of the paint stripper. When I'm working on my models, I like to maintain a clean work environment. One of the ways I achieve this is by using homemade disposable cardboard work mats. I make these using my guillotine and cardboard packaging that would otherwise be thrown in the bin. Now I'm going to attempt to clean up these wheels and the other plastic bits by immersing them in brake fluid. I'm hoping that the brake fluid will remove the paint but will not damage the plastic parts. I'm using disposable ice cream lids as baths into which I am pouring the brake fluid. Unfortunately the seat parts are too big for my little baths so I'm going to have to upgrade to a disposable rice bowl to make them fit. I'll just top it up with some more brake fluid. There, that's good. 
I give them a little agitation and then leave them for one hour. Now I'm taking them out and I'm going to try and remove the paint by rubbing lightly with a cotton bud. Let's see how it works. Well, as you can see, there's definitely some green paint coming off there. These wheels are going to look brand new by the time I've finished with them. Now let's try the seats. Okay, this was much harder. A little bit more fiddly, time consuming. I'm speeding up the footage here because it took literally ages to get these clean. I had to resort to using a toothpick to get into all the nooks and crannies of the stairwell. Then followed with a pointy modelling knife. Now this was a bit annoying. There was actually a pinhole in one of the stairs. It must have occurred during manufacturing. Maybe an air bubble in the plastic. So I decided to fill it with some plastic putty and then I'll sand it down and you won't even know it was there. See, I told you so. It came out all right as did the interior seats. I just placed the upper and lower deck seats together and I was quite amazed at how well the model matched with the stairwell leading up to the upper floor. I'm now going to lightly spray the wheels satin black. So I've stuck them on some paper tape here so they don't blow around when I'm airbrushing them. Here's a quick look at some of the details of the casting. For example, the radiator grill here. This casting actually looks a bit rough compared to some of the ones I've seen. That number plate and headlights are real ordinary. There's a couple of display windows on the back and reversing lights I'm guessing and brake lights. On this side you can just make out a really small fuel filler cap. On the advice of some of my subscribers, I went out and bought some medical forceps to hold the model whilst I paint it. The secret is to grip the model on an area that is not going to be seen after it's been reassembled, because obviously it won't get painted. For those not familiar with these forceps, Here's a demo of how they lock together, using small interlocking teeth midway up the handle. Now I'm going to give the parts a light spray with some primer. You want to keep the primer very thin, that way it doesn't obscure the details on the casting. Here's a great idea I had. It's a magnetic paintbrush holder that I've repurposed to hold the scalpel and model whilst the model dries after I've airbrushed it. Now it's time to repaint the bus. This time, red. That was the base, now it's time for the body.
time to clean up these axles and make them look half decent. I simply put them in the chuck and me drill and grab some emery paper. Then I grip the axle with the emery paper and run the drill to polish it up. Here's what it looks like when I've finished. Right, now all the bits are painted and cleaned, it's time to put the model back together. First up, I'm going to reform the end of the axles to stop those wheels from falling off. You can find a detailed description of how I do this in my other videos. Basically, I use two modified nails and a drill press. The finished result on the axle ends is almost as good as the original. Now I've just got four parts to put together. Should be simple. The top deck seating has three little notches in the side that align with ribbing on the inside of the roof. I'm guessing this is a design feature to prevent the model being assembled incorrectly. Now the lower deck is inserted into the model. And this is the tricky bit. A little bit like a Chinese puzzle getting this in. Has to be done in the right order. There, I've got it. Now I've just got to flex the rear end here with a flat bladed screwdriver and get the tab in the slot and that's it back together. After I put it back together, for the first time I noticed this void under the stairs. I remember it as a kid getting on the bus Mothers would place their push chairs and shopping trolleys in there rather than sitting with them at their feet. Right, now it's time to put these viscostatic water slide decals on. So I start by cutting the decals roughly to size and then do a test fit to see what they look like. Next I place the decals in lukewarm water so they will separate from the backing sheet. Before the decal separates, I prepare the vehicle by moistening the area where the decal is going to go. Next I carefully position the decal using some tweezers and prepare to slide the backing sheet from under the decal. Sounds pretty simple, right? but sometimes things don't go as you plan. In this case, the front end of the sticker has folded underneath itself, which is going to cause me a lot of dramas. Before the decal dries out and sticks itself to the model, I've got to unfold that front edge somehow. Here I'm attempting to do it using a paintbrush. Now some tweezers and finally a toothpick. It's around about now that I'm uh, starting to panic. If I can't sort this out I'm gonna have to order some replacement decals and that's gonna put this project back another two weeks. What I managed to do is run the front of the decal off the front of the model therefore when I drag it back it kind of unfolded itself but in doing so I folded the back end up. I keep wetting it to give me time to fiddle around with it but you know what? I'm actually thinking I might just give up right now because things aren't going my way. I've put hundreds of these water slide transfers on and everyone is different but no matter how good you think you are you can always come unstuck in the bat of an eyelid. Good news is I finally get there and hastily remove the excess moisture using a small piece of tissue paper to try and get this baby to stick before it moves again. 
Finally, I can squeegee out any excess moisture in air bubbles by rolling a cotton bud over the decal. Phew, I got there in the end, finally. It was touch and go for a while there. Same sticker, same model, but the second one went on real quick. No problems at all. Now for final effect, I'm going to highlight some of the chrome parts with a paintbrush, but using paint from this silver marker pen. The reason being is that the paint is very fluid and flows into all the nooks and crannies of the model. It makes painting small details just that little bit easier. If I happen to go outside the box or area of detail I'm working on, I wait till the paint has dried and then go over it again with some matching red just to try and make it perfect. So here's a recap of what the model looked like before I started. Someone had painted it green and made a real mess of it. This model was crying out for a makeover. So who was I to say no? So here is the final result. I hope you've enjoyed watching the makeover of the Matchbox number no. 5 London bus. Here as promised is a view of the other bus I did 6 months ago with the BP Long Life stickers on it. Now I've got to dash off and find another model for my Marty's Matchbox makeovers. Here comes my bus, so I will catch you later. Bye! <coughs> Jeez, it made a mess of his face. in the mice and start stripping it down. Ah, oh, yeah.